This video gives a proof of Green's theorem, a theorem that relates line integrals to double integrals. Suppose that f and g are functions of two variables with continuous first partial derivatives. Let's let c be a positively oriented piecewise smooth curve or collection of curves that bounds a region r, which I've shaded in light blue. Positively oriented means that as I travel around each of these boundary curves, the region needs to stay on my left. So this outside curve needs to be oriented counterclockwise, but the inner curves need to be oriented clockwise so that the region still stays on the left as I travel around them. Piecewise smooth means that my boundary curves can be broken up into finitely many pieces such that each piece can be parameterized by some r of t, that gives the x and y points on the curve, such that r prime of t exists and is never zero. Under these conditions, Green's theorem says that this line integral over the curve c of f dx plus g dy is equal to a related double integral, where we integrate the partial of g with respect to x minus the partial of f with respect to y over the region r in bounded by the curves. Recall that this notation, integral of f dx plus g dy, since this is a line integral over a curve, this really means that we take the integral of f, evaluated at x of t, y of t, times x prime of t, dt, plus the integral of g of x of t, y of t, times y prime of t, dt, where t ranges over the interval for the curve. And here, again, x and y refer to the components of the parameterization. So r prime of t is our x prime of t, y prime of t. To prove Green's theorem, we'll first prove some related results on special types of regions. And then we'll put those regions together to get Green's theorem on more general regions. The two special types of regions we'll start with are called type 1 and type 2 regions. Type 1 regions are bounded by curves at the top and at the bottom, but straight lines on the left and right sides. It's okay if one or more of those straight lines collapses to points. What's important is that the top and bottom curves can be written as y as a function of x. So here I'll write y is h2 of x, and this bottom one I'll write y equals h1 of x. So those curves have to satisfy the vertical line test. Type 2 regions are like type 1 regions turned sideways. So in this case, we have the left and right side might be curves, and the top and bottom are going to be straight lines. Those straight lines, again, are allowed to collapse to points if we want them to. But in this case, what's important is that the left and right curves can be written as x as a function of y. So I'll write x equals k1 of y for the left curve, and x equals k2 of y for the right curve. So those curves need to satisfy the horizontal line test so that x will be a legitimate function of y on those curves. So our first step in proving Green's theorem is to show that if r is a type 1 region, then the integral over c of f dx is equal to the double integral over the region of negative df dy. Our next step will be to show that if r is a type 2 region, then the line integral of g dy is equal to the double integral of dg dx. The third step will be to put these together to prove Green's theorem for regions that are both type 1 and type 2. Here's an example of a region that's both type 1 and type 2. Since this curve here satisfies the, both the vertical and the horizontal line test, we can think of this as a type 1 region with curves on the top and bottom where y is a function of x and a vertical line on the left side 
or we can think of it as a type two region with curves on the left and the right where x is a function of y and a straight line on the bottom edge. After proving Green's theorem for regions that are both type one and type two regions, our fourth and final step will be to prove Green's theorem in general by putting together type one and type two regions into general shapes. Let's start with step one and a type one region. To compute the line integral, integral of c f dx, we need to parameterize our curve, our boundary curve. So I'm gonna break this boundary curve up into four pieces, call it c1, c2, c3, c4, and orient them positively with respect to the region. Now my line integral is gonna be the sum of the four line integrals over these four different curves. I'm gonna compute these line integrals one at a time. Let's start with C1. The easy way to parameterize it is to use the copycat parameterization, x equals t, y equals h1 of t. So x prime of t is gonna be one, and y prime of t is gonna be h1 prime of t. So the integral over C1 of f dx is by definition the integral of f of x of t, y of t, times x prime of t, dt. That goes from wherever t starts. So let's see if our curve down at the bottom is starting at x equals a, that'll mean t will start at a. And if it ends at x equals b, that'll mean t equal ends at b. So substituting in, this is the same as the integral from a to b of f of t, h1 of t times one dt. So that's my first integral. Let's next parameterize c2. Well, since that's just a vertical line, that can just be parameterized x is always equal to b and y can be equal to t. So I'm gonna have x prime of t is zero and y prime of t is one. When I write out the integral f dx, since x prime of t is zero, I'm just gonna get zero for this integral and it doesn't matter. Next, let me parameterize C3. Actually, I'll parameterize negative C3 since it's a little easier for me to go from left to right. Then I can let x equals t and y equal h2 of t where t goes from a to b again. So x prime of t will be one and y prime of t will be h2 prime of t. If I set up my integral as before over negative c3, I get the integral from t equals a to b of f of t h2 of t dt. Now this was the integral over negative c3. So the integral over c3 of f dx is gonna be the negative. Finally, looking at c4, or maybe negative c4, I'm gonna parameterize that with x equals a, y equals t. So x prime is gonna be zero, once again. So when I set up that integral, since x prime of t is zero, I'll once again get zero for my answer. That means that my integral over the whole boundary curve C is just gonna equal the integral from T equals A to B of F of T H1 of T minus F of T H2 of T dt. That comes from this piece here and this piece here that has a negative sign in front of it. Now I wanna show that my line integral equals the double integral of negative df dy. So let me clear myself a little space and I'm gonna be starting on the right side of this equation. That is computing the double integral over the region of negative df dy dA. Since we're working with a type one region, it's very natural to compute this integral going in the y direction first and then in the x direction. So then y is gonna go between h1 of x 
and h2 of x, and x is going in between a and b, because remember we were calling this vertical line at x equals a and that one x equals b. So now by the fundamental theorem of calculus, if I integrate a derivative with respect to y and then integrate with respect to y, I just get the original, which is negative f in this case, evaluated at the bounds. The bounds for y are h2 of x and h1 of x. So that'll be at negative f x h2 of x minus negative f x of h1 of x. And then this is still integrated dx, where x goes from a to b. If I simplify a little bit, rearrange things, x equals a to b, I get positive f of x h1 of x minus f of x h2 of x dx. But that's exactly what I got when I did my line integrals. I'm just calling it t here and x here, but it's exactly the same integral, exactly the same answer. So my left side and my right side are in fact equal, and I've completed step one. Proof of step two is almost exactly like the proof of step one. So I invite you to pause the video and work it out for yourself. For step two, we're gonna start with a type two region. Let's say that this bottom side is at y equals c and the top side is at y equals d. Once again, I'll divide my boundary into four pieces, c1, c2, c3, and c4 oriented positively. And I'll get to work parameterizing my four curves. C1 will be parameterized by copycat parameterization, y equals t, x equals k2 of t. C2, which is at the top, will just be, I'll parameterize negative C2, and it'll just be x equals t, y equals d. C3, I'll parameterize negative C3 and use y equals t, x equals k1 of t. And C4, I'll parameterize with x equals t, y equals c. When I compute x prime and y prime for each of these parameterizations, I see that for C2 and C4, y prime of t is zero. So when I go about computing the integral of g dy, I'm gonna get zero in both these cases. For the integral over C1 of g dy, I'm gonna get the integral of g of x of t, y of t, so that's k2 of t, t, times y prime of t, so that's one dt, where y and t are both going from c to d. When I compute the integral over negative c3 of g dy, that's gonna be the integral. t is again going from c to d, because t is just following y, and that's gonna be g of x of t, so that's k1 of t, y of t is t times y prime of t, which is one dt. So I get that the integral over the entire curve c of g dy is the sum of these, which is the integral from t equals c to d of g of k2 of t, t minus g of k1 of t, t, dt. The negative sign pops in here because I computed this integral over negative c3, which means if I'd computed it over c3, I would get the negative of my answer. I've computed the left side of this equation. Now I need to compute the right side and make sure I get the same thing. To compute the double integral over the region of d g dx dA, since it's a type two region, it's most natural to compute that in the x direction first and then the y direction. So x is running from k1 of y to k2 of y and y is running from c to d. Once again, fundamental theorem of calculus lets me rewrite the integral of this derivative by just going to the original function, g, 
evaluated at the boundary. So that's where x is k2 of y, and y is just staying where it is, minus g of k1 of y, because I'm plugging in k2 and ky for x, which is my variable that I integrated with respect to. Okay, so now I have exactly the same expression here as I got for my line integral here, just with written in terms of y's dy's versus t's dt's. And I am done with step two of Green's theorem. Fortunately, step three is super easy. For a region that's both type one and type two, I have both step one and step two's results hold. So I know that the line integral of f dx plus g dy is just gonna be the sum of these two double integrals. And that's what Green's theorem says right here. So I've used these two statements to prove G's, Green's theorem for regions that are both type one and type two. Finally, let's do step four and prove Green's theorem for a general region like the one I drew previously. I'm gonna take my region and divide it into a bunch of smaller regions in such a way that each of those smaller regions is both a type one and a type two region. I can do that by just drawing enough horizontal and vertical lines so that my remaining curvy lines are in segments that are all both satisfying the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. I'll label those smaller regions like R1, R2 through say Rn, and now my double integral over my entire region R of dg dx minus df dy can be written as the sum of those integrals over all these tiny regions. Now since each of these regions is both a type one and a type two region, I can rewrite those double integrals as single integrals over the boundaries of these tiny regions. Single integrals, that is, of f dx plus g dy. But notice how the boundaries of these little regions, adjacent little regions, match up. Since we're going in the positive direction around that little region, and we're also going in the positive direction around that little region, their shared edge, that vertical line there, will be traversed twice, once for the region on the right, say that's R4, and once for the region on the left, say R3, but they'll be traversed in opposite directions, for R4 will be going down, and for R3 will be going up, so the line integrals on that shared boundary, they'll cancel out from the two regions. And in fact, that'll happen for all the shared boundaries, which means all that's left in these line integrals, the only curves that we actually end up going around that don't cancel out is the original curve C because those curves are not shared by regions on either side. So that means that this sum of integrals over here, the sum of line integrals, is actually just equal to the line integral over the original bounding curve C of f dx plus g dy, and we've proved Green's theorem for general regions. That completes the proof of Green's theorem.